And within six months, I'd moved into a management position and, and I got a taste of what it was like to teach and train and develop people and I fell in love with that. But I couldn't stand my boss. Anybody, can you relate? <laughs> got a full ride scholarship to the University of Northern Colorado, as Steve was saying. And my first year there, sat the bench, learned the system. Second year there, I started and had a breakout season. All conference, got into the record books. And in my mind, I'm inching my way closer to playing pro football, that childhood dream. My junior year comes, and we're playing uh, toward the end of the season, have another breakout year. We're playing one of the top ranked teams in the nation, and this is a nationally televised game. Now, back in 2000, there was no social media, right? So there's no way to really display what was going on, but this was an opportunity to play on Fox, nationally televised game, one of the top ranked teams in the nation, end up having a really stellar game, 10 catches, 215 yards, and this touchdown. And so this put me on the map, right? And um, so my senior year comes, and I work hard, and I'm ready, you know, and uh, 10 games into the season, we have our final home game, a very emotional day. And on this, on this final home game, on this particular play, I'm literally 95 yards short of breaking our school record for yards in a career, which is a pretty big deal. And in my mind, I'm inching my way closer to, to achieving that childhood dream. So my job on this play uh, is to block number 18. As you can see, number 18, his job is to tackle number eight, who's being tackled from behind. So I, I plant my right leg to give one last thrust into the defender. And as you can see, yeah, oof. I still get choked up uh, thinking about that. Um, but I remember I tried to get up and I reached down, I grabbed my leg and I feel the bone shift in my leg. I'm very Joe Theismann, ask if you remember that. And, um, they took me off to the sideline, they took off my shoe and my sock, and I looked down and I just see my leg dangling there, right? And, uh, oh, and uh, the trainer, he's working on me and he, he doesn't want to look at me, he's very hesitant, but he needs to tell me something and I'm just, I, I'm in shock and I need something. And he finally looks me in the eye and says, I'm oh, sorry, George, it's over. And uh, I just crumbled, man, everything in me just crumbled. And uh, they put an air cast on my leg to try to stabilize the break as much as they could before they took me, uh, took me into the operating room to, to operate on my leg. And as I was leaving the field, I remember, I remember just had my head down like this and all of a sudden I hear these loud roars from our crowd. So I looked at the field assuming we scored a big touchdown and then I see my, our players, opposing, opposing players clapping and I look up to our stands, 10,000 fans sending me off in a standing ovation. It was the most bittersweet moment of my life. Um, after that, I fell into a real dark place. You know, suicidal thoughts, questioning my life, why was I here? And that was the place uh, that many of us have experienced called rock bottom. You know, we've all been there, right? We've all had our own version of rock bottom where we start to question, like, why am I here? What's the purpose of this thing called life? And fortunately graduated with a communication degree from the University of Northern Colorado, moved to Denver, got a job in tech sales, and I sort of turned that, that pain into fuel. And within six months, I'd moved into a management position, and, and I got a taste of what it was like to teach and train and develop people, and I fell in love with that. But I couldn't stand my boss. Anybody, can you relate? <laughs> got one hand right here, smart crowd, got a smart crowd. So a couple of you started going, oh, no, no, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> After his keynote, people were blown away. They were excited, they were motivated, they were energetic.